Welcome to VMblog's coverage of the VMware Explore 2022 event in San Francisco. We're happy to be joined today by Daniel Valdivia, an engineer with MinIO. It's great to speak with you today. Thanks for having me, David. So I guess we can jump right in if we if uh, if you could just maybe give us a quick overview of the company itself. So MinIO, it's an object storage. So we wanted to build uh we, we saw what uh, the Amazon was doing with the S3 API, and we thought, oh, that's a really cool idea. We want to be the S3 compatible storage, uh, storage for everyone who needs object storage with an S3 API outside of AWS, right? And that's all the people running VMware outside where they have applications that consume data at scale or at high performance, and they need an, an object storage compatible, uh, an S3 compatible object storage, right? And that's what Minio provides. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about how your company partners or works with the uh, VMware and its ecosystem. So yes, we've seen a, a lot of customer VMware customers running different set of workloads and then having the need to run their own object storage in their infrastructure. And then we saw, for example, that they were using vSAN, but then uh, we we wanted to have a way to unlock a higher throughput uh, on on the DPP platform. So we work closely with VMware to actually develop vSAN Direct which will allow uh, the MinIO pods to actually have direct access to the underlying disk connected to the ESX host. And that allows actually for VMware customers to build very large, very high throughput uh, object storage clusters on VMware and integrate them with their uh, workflows, right? Whether they're running uh, big data analytics or machine learning workflows or any other sort of application that requires object storage. So when when thinking about a company who is running VMware uh, an implementation in their, in their shop, uh, what does your company offer them specifically, or I guess more importantly, what are the problems that you're solving for them? So uh, when when people think about setting up uh, storage infrastructure, usually they think about, you know, this is gonna be a, a tough problem. I need to procure uh, appliance or something else, right? So Minayo uh, being software, entirely software defined unlocks them to actually uh, build their own storage infrastructure with uh, the infrastructure they already have, right? So let's say they already have uh, a large VMware cluster. So they want to be able to say, okay, I'm going to be running my storage as wide as I have. And then I'll be provisioning storage via JBots or vSAN or vSAN Direct or any other storage technology that I have uh, in Uniston with my VMware setup. So it, it's already unlocking them to actually uh, build a storage infrastructure based on, the, on their needs. And we're not actually boxing them to be like, okay, you have to buy this additional hardware, right? So you can work with your existing. And you can see how this is very flexible. So let's say you are building your production and say, yes, you, you pick you know, 60 nodes, 32 nodes, whatever fits your production needs. But then you have a few developers who are like, you know, I would like to play with the object storage. Can I get my own MinIO instance? Yes, and you can quickly provision that in minutes, right? You don't have to go through any complicated processes and you can decide where to run it uh, in a traditional fashion, just using virtual machines or TKG clusters, right? That's a very uh, uh, popular uh, way of running MinIO nowadays, you know, using tons of guest clusters or using the PP platforms for high throughput and high scale uh, setups. And so we've already kind of talked a little bit about your technology, but maybe you can kind of give us kind of a deeper dive into your technology and what kind of differentiates you in the market and makes you unique. So I think um, st starting, with, I already mentioned that one of our highlights is the 100% compatibility with the S3 API. This means that if you have any workload running on AWS and you want to take it out, or you have any application that, let's say, a Spark pipeline that requires object storage or a TensorFlow machine learning pipeline, uh, you can just point it to MinIO and it will work. You don't need to modify the code or anything, right? Just change the endpoint. That's one of the advantages. But also, uh, MinIO is quite simple to operate. So if you look at uh, what we ship, we ship a single 100 megabyte binary. It has everything you need in it. You don't have to set up additional databases or anything. There's no centralized metadata store. So you just have to get that binary and you can see how easy it's now put that binary on a VM and run it, right? And have it find uh, as many peers as you decided to set up. So uh, when it comes to operations, it's that simple to operate and scale, but then simple doesn't mean slow, right? We actually have, a, we build a very high performance object storage, right? That can pull almost as hard as your, uh, allow, uh, as your hardware allows you, right? So. It, that's those are the features that people seem to come when they love when they come to us and discover how it's actually to run the storage. They are like, this is great. I don't have 
external dependencies or third party software or a database that I need to maintain because some other solutions are like, yeah, we'll give you some storage, but you need like a Cassandra database to keep uh, a list of all your files, right? So now you have two problems, uh, running this storage solution plus running Cassandra, right? And with Minaya, you don't have such problems, right? So ease of operations, that, that will be like the, sec the second. And then uh, we can go at, at insane scale, right? So we're built for X scale. So we're we're not even built for today's scales, we're built for tomorrow's scales. So it doesn't matter if you're trying to go very small and say, well, I've provisioned a few gigabytes for some team on their own instance, or I'm running all my production and I have multiple petabytes running on my infrastructure. Minayo can stand that and serve that at very high, uh, high speed. And, you know, uh, there a lot of vendors are here. They're talking about new or recent announcements that they've uh, that they've made, uh, and mm -hmm. and discussing those with uh, attendees here at VMware Explore. Uh, do you have any such kind of announcements, or uh, and if so, can you give us the details of what that is? We don't have any concrete announcements for this particular VMware. We were actually announced last year that we were shipping along with the data persistent platform. So which that's that ships with uh, vSphere 7.0 update uh, one. So, but we are continuously working closely with VMware so that we we actually embrace all the newer features that vSphere 8.0 will actually uh, ship. So that that's mainly what people can come to expect from the native integration that you can find inside vSphere. Uh, but of course, uh, that's probably the only feature that, or the only probably announcement or sell announcement from last year carrying over into this year. At VMware Explore, uh, VMware is talking about the big picture in the keynotes and on the stages. Um, what's the big themes and trends in 2022 and 2023 uh, that your company is interested in? So we're we're seeing this trend of people actually starting to move out of the cloud, right? So it it's starting to be prohibitively expensive, and this is where VMware comes into place, right? And also we see customers wanting to be in control of their data. They no longer want to delegate the data because once you start reaching petabyte scale, if you're inside any cloud provider, getting out uh, consuming that petabyte or more data becomes prohibitively expensive. So we see customers actually starting to move out. But then they want to set multiple sites. So we want we see customers setting their own uh, storage infrastructure, their own data lakes, and setting up across multiple sites, having continuous replication happening through them, tiering data for, uh, to cheaper storage mediums. And we see that all the customers taking control back of the cloud by running it themselves. So that that's the trend that we're seeing. Uh, Daniel, this has been a lot of great information. Uh, I'm wondering. Is there any way you can give us uh, or show us a quick demo of the product so viewers who are watching this can kind of see what it looks like? Sure, of course. I have a five minute video uh, with, uh, of actually going through our uh, data persistent platform integration. You can see how it's actually activated from within vSphere and orchestrated everything through the uh, comfortable UI that you already know and love, which is the, uh, the vSphere UI. Okay, it's great. Hello and welcome. And I'm giving you an overview of Minayo running on BDPP, uh, which is shipped uh, beginning in vSphere 7.0 update 1. So beginning uh, vSphere 7.0 update 1, you'll be seeing a, a set of uh, supervisor services shipped with, al along with every single cluster. Uh, on 7.0 U3, these are actually called vSphere services. To actually integrate Minayo, to activate Minayo, uh, proceed on, a, on the cluster where you want to activate integration and go into your vSphere services section. And you see that Minayo is now actually shipped uh, with vSphere. Just select the, the service and click install. And that'll be it. Now, now Minayo will be installed. After doing so, one of the requirements is that you will need to provision a, a namespace to install a Minayo tenant. And pretty much the, creating the, the the namespace is quite simple, right? So on the cluster where you want to, uh, when you where you have activated the plugin, you select a new namespace. In this case, let's say I'll be creating a demo namespace over here. And after uh, provisioning the namespace, I'll be attaching some storage policies, right? So you can start start uh, install storage policies uh, from Bison to take care of the storage. In this case, I'll be doing Bison plus the new Bison direct, right? So now. That's that's it. Now I'm ready to actually get back uh, to provisioning object storage on vSphere uh, using BDPP. So I'll go, I'll proceed to go back to my cluster. And now after activating the plugin, uh, I'll see you'll see that here on the menu side, you'll, uh, there's a new Minio menu that presents the integration, right? So you'll have a landing page where you can actually check the state of your license or activate any license, should you have one, uh, and also the list of tenants. 
So the tenant in this, in this case is the analogy that we're using to describe Amin IO deployment. And it can have different capacities. They can have different configurations and sizes. And if, if we get to explore one of these, we can see the capacity that has been set up. We can see the deep integration with the system. If I need to expand the capacity for this uh, tenant, I can do it from here. If I need to review uh, this, the health of the system, I can also get a high overview from here or see, for example, all the pods that are running. These pod VMs are actually mapped into the names, into uh, virtual machines that are running actually on my vCenter. If I were to explore the namespace where I have placed this tenant, I will see the VMs actually being placed here. So uh, if, if anything were to happen in, to any of these VMs, I can always come back to here and check what's the status of the system, which we'll do in a moment. But I think, uh, a, I think a great way to understand what a tenant entails is by actually creating one. It's pretty simple to do it now. Just go in, into the add button here and let's provision a tenant for, let's say, video storage, right? I'll be putting that on that na demo namespace that we just created together and I'll be selecting the new vSense Direct storage policy. I'll take a detour into the advanced mode so, I, so you can take a, a look of all the things you can configure. The things you can configure ranges from private uh, Docker registries in case you are doing an airgap deployment. You can control the pod placement in case you have a very large uh, cluster and you want to control which machines this gets deployed to. You can con uh, configure external identity providers. Uh, we support uh, Minios comes with a built-in identity provider. You can also configure OpenID or Active Directory LDAP. You can configure TLS, manage, bring your own certificates to terminate TLS here. You can also configure encryption at rest. Uh, and lastly, you can resize the tenant. In this case, let's say I'll be going with a, a tenant of four servers, si uh, 100 gigabytes in size, and let's give it just a few CPUs. I'll be giving only eight CPUs and eight gigabytes of RAM. So, and that's it. That's how simple it is to actually provision object storage on vSphere um, 7.0 update one uh, on BDPP. Now, this, this is gonna take a couple of minutes and the tenant will come online now. After the tenant has been provisioned, uh, we can see other parts of the integration, such as integration with Visa and Skyline Health. Here on the menu, you'll see the, the list of services. Menu service is actually available, and you'll see that both deployments are actually op operational now. And we also support integration with EMM and evacuation mode. So in case you need to uh, put a node into maintenance mode, the integration that we have here, let's say I put a node into maintenance mode and power it off. Uh, the integration will take care of actually making sure that uh, you won't lose actually the service. If you can tolerate it, it will be allowed. If there's a problem, uh, the EMM will be held off until you're done. So this has been a quick review of all the capabilities that we have introduced uh, with the MinIO integration for DP BDPP. I hope this has been instructional and please leave a comment and subscribe in case you have any questions. Thank you. Well, thanks for uh, letting us take a look at that demo. And where can people go if they want to find out more information about MinIO and some of the things you've talked about today? So um, something that I, I haven't mentioned is MinIO is 100% open source. So you can, of course, um, go to our website to find out more. Our website is min.io. But of course, you can also find us on GitHub and review our source code, or you can join us on Slack. We have a large community Slack, and the community is actually driving driving us a lot, right? We see the communities embracing our technologies and you can actually join our community and be part of it and say, hey guys, it would be really awesome if we had this feature on MinIO, right? So you can also find us on Twitter, min, at MinIO, right? So that those are some of the places you can find us. Great. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VM Blog. No problem, anytime.